All right, there has been a lot going on today. So I'm going to make this video to kind of catch us all up. The embargo lifted on the RTX 5090. We're going to take a first look at the AI benchmarks from what I've seen from the reviewers. I'm going to break it down and show you some of those. OpenAI announces O3 Mini for free tier users. Meta, are they worried about the cost that they're spending on AI? And then is DeepSeek just a side project? Let's jump into it. So the RTX 5090 is coming out for the price of $19.99 on January 30th. And I am so tempted to actually get this after seeing what I've seen today. Now, I do say I do want to caveat all this with if you have a 4090 RTX, probably not worth it unless you really need that extra memory. This is specific for AI and running AI models locally. So there's a lot of 5090 videos coming out. Very few are doing deep dives in AI, but I did find some. So this is LTT, so Linus Tech Tips. They did some text generation in 5.3.5 Mini here. And you can see here that it's, uh, let's say an okay, like uplift over the 4090. I was expecting more, but it is a tiny model. So I was, I could see that actually, you know, maybe not showing as big a difference, which you can kind of tell here in the Llama 3.18 billion, it jumps ahead quite a bit more. So impressive. But remember, I'm running this RX 7900 XTX 24 gigabyte. So we're looking at an enormous increase for me being able to run this locally. Oh man, it just, it just really makes me want to go get one. Uh, then they jump into the Llama 2 7 billion chat DML, 247 tokens per second. That seems pretty reasonable. And I will say that is about the time, the speed that I get on my 7900 XTX. As you can see, level one techs actually did a little bit of AI testing as well, which I really appreciate. They actually broke it down in the percentage uplift. So Llama 2 at 34%, Mistral 7B at 28%. This is using the Procyon. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It's an AI text generation benchmark overall score. Then we've got the Llama 3.1 with a 32% uplift over the 4090. And then we also have 5.3.5 with an 18% over the 4090. Now he is testing the 9800 X3D. I I'm going to have to dig into this benchmark a little bit more to understand kind of what it's actually doing and what that score really means. But I am excited to see that kind of uplift over the 4090 because the 4090 already blew my 7900 XDX out of the water. But the price is just so painful. And here's another one. He did the... Procyon AI text generation benchmark tokens per second. You can see 5, 3.5, 320 tokens per second. Again, he's only doing it against the 4090, which is unfortunate. I'd love to see it against other cards, but it does give you an understanding of kind of like how that's improving. Llama 3.1, 261 tokens per second. Mistral 7B, 217 tokens per second. A 45% uplift. A 45% uplift on Llama 2. Incredible. Again, I wish it was bigger models, and we'll have to see. Really need to get my hands on one of these so I can do some deep dive testing as well. This article is the best article I've probably found overall, where it kind of breaks down the uh, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5090 and really all of the different 5000 series, but there's more to it. You should definitely check this art article out. I'll have the link in the description. The Phi output tokens per second, 314.435. The one thing I'd say is they don't really specify specifically the model they're running. So Mistral, Llama 3, Llama 2, Phi. I'm assuming maybe that's a 3.5, maybe that's 4. We don't really know, and that is unfortunate with this. But you can still see the comparative uplift. So we've got a, a good uplift on the tokens per second on Phi. We've got a good uplift on the Mistral, out, uh, Mistral output tokens per second. The output time to first token for all of them, really, I found that to be negligible and not so important unless you're talking about seconds. Like some of the reasoning models can take 30 to 40 seconds sometimes to get going on my card. And it's as if I'm like pushing it really hard. So 0.234 to 0.41, not going to matter in my personal opinion. Llama 3, 214 up from 150. Llama 2, 134 up from 92. So pretty amazing. Then they talk a little bit about AI generation and you can kind of see the uplift here as well. We're still looking at that like 30 to 40% uplift for a lot of these. Now, the next article that I found talked about flux. The one, p the one point I want to kind of call out is that first glance you're like, whoa, uh, why is this 
17.12 for FP4 more than the FP8 version of that 9.94 on the RTX 4090? Well, it's because RTX 4090 doesn't really have support for FP4. It has to kind of emulate that behind the scenes, whereas the 5090 actually has native support for that. So it absolutely crushes on FP4. How important that will be, it's kind of going to still be determined, but it is a nice thing to have because I do think as models get better, lower precision using a floating point or uh, four bit floating points is going to be something that we're going to see more of, but we will have to see. And for example, you can actually use four bit floating point and image generation, and it does a reasonably good job. He did talk a little bit about one, on one resize AI, which is upscaling. Um, and you could see just the enormous improvement here because the lower numbers, the better compared to even my card, the RX 7900 XTX that I currently have. Now, this article on Team Blind, I thought was really interesting. But if you think about this from a company perspective, I've been a part of big companies and they will dump tons of money into things. And then you'll see this other small company come out and just do everything better and quicker. And I think that's what Meta is going through right now. They're paying like some of these executives probably what it costs to train DeepSeek R1. Think about that. It's absolutely incredible. So, of course, management is worried about just finding the massive cost of Gen AI. How are they going to face the leadership when every single leader of Gen AI or is making more than what it costs to train DeepSeek V3 entire, entirely? And they have dozens of leaders. I can't verify the validity of this. But thinking about it from my experience, this is exactly what I've seen happen when another company comes out and like just comes out quicker, faster, better, cheaper. And you're like, why did it take us so long? It's because we added all this bureaucracy on there. We've got all these layers, we've got all these meetings that we got to have, we've got all these committees that have to make decisions versus just a little scrappy team that wanted to get in and actually build something. It makes a huge, huge difference. And on top of that, there's this post by Han Chow. DeepSeek's holding company is a quant company many years already. Super smart guys with top math background happen to own a lot of GPU for trading mining purposes. And DeepSeek is their side project. If that is true, I do not know if that's true. I did look into Han Zhao and he is the uh, CEO of Gina AI. And seems like a legitimate guy, but again, I don't really know how valid that is but it would be fascinating to think about it that there's this company that just for fun on the side because they have extra time and money they built deep seek and released it to the world you know i've done videos about the positive sides of deep seek i've done videos about the bad sides of deep seek honestly if this holds true like this would be a huge positive in my mind because they're not doing it for any ulterior motive they're potentially doing this just because it's something they're passionate about. And the, the things like open source passion are like my favorite projects to follow. Finally, big news, the free tier of ChatGPT is going to get O3 Mini and the plus tier will get tons of O3 Mini usage. I think, I think they have to do this in response to DeepSeek. I think that's probably what's driving that. I doubt they had plans to actually put O3 Mini in the free tier until DeepSeek came out and was actually having a really solid reasoning model. Because if you think about it, the free version of ChatGPT doesn't really have a good reasoning model for you to even use. You don't even really get to pick the model. You just get GPT, which you can assume is probably like 4.0 or one of those models. But they're putting a reasoning model in there because DeepSeek is free. It's getting a lot of press. A lot of people are excited about it. And if you go and look at a lot of the articles on X and any other social media that's talking about it, Reddit in particular, People are blown away by like how good DeepSeek is and that it's open source and free. Anyway, I am curious what you guys all think. Should I get an RTX 1590? Have you seen other places that have benchmarked AI stuff that I should be checking out? I can't wait to get my hands on it. I hope I can get one on the 30th. Unless something, unless I talk myself out of it because $2,000 is a lot of money. You almost have to give up uh like an organ, like a kidney or something to sell that for the price of one of these things. Anyway, super fun day. Uh, lots of great news. I'm excited to dig into some of these things. Appreciate you all. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Until next time, peace out.